Ever since we discovered the true expanses of the universe, humans have wondered, are we truly alone? Is there really no one else that can share our experiences of elevated intelligence? Is this really it? But we forget about the ancient aliens we already share the Earth with. Us. Well, obviously not us, but technically us. That's right, I'm talking about the other species of humans that used to exist, which is the closest we have ever come to interacting with other intelligent life. So it made me say, screw aliens, what if we still had to live alongside our ancient relatives? They're close enough, right? Henceforth I made this video, in an attempt to answer this very question. Before we can imagine living alongside other human species, we need to understand why they disappeared. Oh, I found it. See, we've always been the problem. Since Homo sapiens, us, were so successful, we drove all the other species into the ground permanently when we started moving out of Africa about 70,000 years ago. Since every time we reached a new region, we would outcompete the other hominins of that area for resources, whether that be through more advanced hunting techniques, tool use, and social structures. Even though species like Neanderthals were better than us in almost every single way, Homo sapiens were more ambitious, had higher respawn rates, and surprisingly, what probably helped them the most was their smaller size in comparison to the Neanderthals. Since the Neanderthals had to eat way more than us, they were forced to have smaller groups while humans were able to have larger groups while not being at too much of a size disadvantage. Now you may be asking, if this is the case, then why didn't the Floresian outcompete Homo sapiens? And that is because they were literally real life hobbits, perfectly adapted to fit the Indonesian island of Flores. So once what must have been literal giants showed up to their front lawn 50,000 years ago, they got completely outmatched, which ultimately resulted in our little buddy's extinction. So how do we prevent Homo sapiens from taking out all the other species? The real answer would be, we don't. But let's just say that they can't leave Africa and boom, now almost all the other human species don't go extinct. Now that we prevented their extinction event from moving, we can move on and see what history would look like living alongside our human counterparts. After we allow the other human species to survive, we need to know what would make them contenders on the world stage. And I think I have the answer. And that answer would be good old farming. Farming would not only give all the other species of reliable food supplies, but now they can focus on other things like art, advancing their tools, and creating new cultures, since life is no longer just surviving, but thriving. Historically, the spread of agriculture was nearly universal, about 9,000 years ago. Across the globe, civilizations independently learned to domesticate animals, cultivate crops, and even manage forests. Now with this ability, smaller species of humans would be able to increase their size and brain power, while species like Neanderthals would be able to populate more since they would no longer need to worry about not being able to feed everybody. And this is where I believe a pivotal shift would occur, because now the larger, stronger, and faster versions of the Homo sapien would now be able to support populations comparable to ours. About 3,000 years after the creation of farming, it would be around this time for civilizations to rise and for us to advance our tools. It would be around this time that all other human species would try to expand and take more land for themselves, giving way for the first interspecies wars to take place. Because we all know how humans get when they see people that are different from them. But if races of humans are able to coexist, then why wouldn't species of humans be able to coexist too? After all, there is evidence of other hominin genes being present in most of us, so coexistence is definitely not off the table. It's just off the table for now, because morals were not really a big thing back then. So what would history, culture, and nations look like beside our new friends? Now obviously, all of the history we know today would be completely different. Religion? Not the same. And we can whip out the pencils and paper because now every national border can be redrawn. So, where do we go from here? Because new questions arise like, is racism still a thing when there are people that are genuinely genetically different? Would nations be divided by species? And who would be the dominant species now? First off, I don't think there would be that much diversity in race at this point, since in order for all these species to survive this long, they hypothetically haven't moved from their region. Which would mean almost none adapted new skin tones, since these hypothetical humans stayed in Africa, Neanderthals have stayed in Europe and parts of Asia, and Homo erectus has stayed in Asia too, with others sprinkled in their respective areas. But let's loop it back to culture and history for a second, because as we already discussed, history would be completely different, where every single war, historical figure, and event would not have happened. But how about culture? 
Well, as you could probably guess, culture as we know it today wouldn't exist, or it would be extremely altered to fit the other hominid species. That means holidays, events, and celebrations are all gone, and replaced with new ones, just a completely different cultural landscape as we know today. So it goes without saying that adding alien-like figures to our history would result in an alien-like world. You know, while I was reading the script out loud, the more racist or speciesist I should say, I sounded, so I'm telling you right now that I don't discriminate against anyone. Except for Indians. Anyway, it's now time for me to answer the question of who would be the most dominant species, where the answer would be whichever species has the most ambition and creates the most technology. This is due to the fact that nearly all of the economic, political, and societal explosions in our history have all been kickstarted by technology. Think the steam engine in the Industrial Revolution of 1760, or the internet in the Digital Revolution of 1990. And with all that being said, I still believe it would be homo sapiens that would dominate the world. And no, I don't just say that because I'm a homo. Sapien. I say that because based off the evidence that we have in our world today, humans have shown to be mega expansive by nature, very creative by nature, and just plain old ambitious. Now, all the other species could have been like this, but the fact that we are here and they are not is good enough evidence to prove that we possess these traits to a higher degree than they did, so I'm still going with the Homo sapiens. But with all this being said, the biggest question in this hypothetical arises, would we be able to live alongside them peacefully? And my belief is, yes, even though war among civilizations is practically inevitable, sooner or later morals and religion would most likely prevent other species from completely wiping other species off the face of the planet. With the exception of foreign diseases being introduced, of course. I think this is the case because despite the hate and past atrocities we have committed on different races, we have not yet completely wiped races out, so I believe the same would happen here. And as the world modernizes, morals would slowly become more and more enforced, which would hopefully allow the world to become a fair place for all species. Hopefully. Though speciesism against smaller, weaker, or less advanced species would be just as much as a problem as racism is today, it would most likely slowly dissipate across the world. Where instead of celebrating the first Asian president or first black prime minister, we might celebrate the first Neanderthal president or first Homo erectus prime minister instead where species would slowly start integrating into each other's societies, just like how people from different countries integrate into others, where we would finally be able to live among each other peacefully, or at least learn how to share a bit. After learning all of this, it goes without saying that even if one of the other human species survived today, the world would be a much different place, and probably a more fascinating place, where the questions of are we alone or I wonder how they used to live would finally be answered. But sadly, or luckily, I don't know, we will never know these answers unless we find intelligent life outside of the planet or get a time machine. I really like this thought experiment because it allowed me to create a world of my own and see what it would be like to live along near mythological beings. And please tell me if you want me to continue to make more videos like this because I want to make more thought experiment videos in this format more often. Anyway, I'd like to thank you all for watching, please like and subscribe Poppy, and I will see you in another episode.